Welcome to week nine, day three. And uh, today we are going to be uh, learning a new data structure. So your RPGs were due today and um, I'll be grading them uh, later, maybe today. Probably not, I got Japanese homework due tonight, so probably over the weekend uh, is the plan. Um, until you see a grade in your, uh, your uh, Canvas notebook, um, I won't notice if you fix any bugs between now and then. Uh, if that's if that's Korea, that's that's cool. I think it may be Japan, but who knows? I do I do I've done Taekwondo for fifteen years. I know a little bit of Korean. Uh, I can't really speak it at all. Just Anyong Haseo type stuff. But um, I, I did I did teach myself how to read Hangul, which is kind of easy. So, uh, just mostly to mess with the students in my class because they all had their names in Korean on their lapels, and so rather than memorizing their names, it was just easier to learn Hangul. So I could just be like, Daniel, Daniel, you're up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, so far in this class, we have learned vectors, arrays, linked lists, stacks, and queues. And we are getting to the big one now. Like a linked list, about the same level of complexity as a linked list. Got a node. It's got two pointers coming out of every, every node. So, uh, yeah, yeah. We're not doing sword fighting this year, unfortunately. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, it's the cafe on campus. I don't know, some of you guys might never have been to campus. I don't know, but that's that's the uh, cafe there in the background, and that's me in armor fighting uh, one of my friends. I was sitting over the head. Uh, I think I won that one, but he's hitting me right over the buttocks, and so uh, I couldn't sit down for a week. So in some ways, I won won the battle and lost the war. I don't know. Okay, so uh, we don't have midterms anymore. That's cool. All right, so uh, here is a puzzle. Here's a puzzle, and this puzzle, uh, alphabet's much easier. Speaking may be tougher. Romanization doesn't help as much. Um so um, I was talking to my friend about this last night. He actually he actually translates Korean one to one into Japanese because he's fluent in Japanese and he speaks. Took a couple years, I think, of Korean, and so he can actually speak Korean by simply translating Japanese word for word into Korean and applying the Korean language filter to the words. Just kind of cool. So um, uh, South of Seoul, spin every weekend in Seoul. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, a friend of mine was a Korean translator for the for the army and uh, he knew a lot of swear words. It was pretty cool. I was living with a Korean guy. So uh, the Korean guy would be on the phone with his mother, like bowing to his mom over the phone. And my buddy would just be sitting in their background, just like saying like cuss words. And my roommate would get all flustered and ah. <laughs> swear words and hello. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we are going to learn a new data structure today, but in order to introduce the data structure, I am going to give you guys a puzzle from a Dungeons & Dragons game I wrote in 1999. I have published 20 or 30 Dungeons & Dragons modules over the years. Uh, this one has uh, been republished. Uh, a friend of mine, JJ, who is the uh, school psychologist actually at her school now, which is ironic because that's not how I, how I met him. We were friends and then he became the psychologist at the school I work at, which is kind of cool. Uh, he... Um, he, he rewrote my game in to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And so uh, the, I wrote it for 2nd edition. That's how long ago that was. Uh, and 3rd edition. I, I wrote it for both 2nd and 3rd edition D&D. And then um, <clears throat> he uh, updated it to 5th edition. So there, there's the game there. I don't get any royalties from it. But you can support JJ if you'd like. School psychologist. Anyway. So uh, this is a puzzle I made for the game. And so we'll see if you guys can figure it out. I got some music too. Yeah. It's the MIDI from a uh, uh, Daggerfall. So uh, this is uh, a puzzle. Uh, there is a inscription. There's a door. The you're you're trapped in the mines of Moria. It's not actually the mines of Moria, but uh, 
You're trapped in the Mines of Moria, and there is a doorway out that is barred by four unbreakable puzzle bars that cannot be bypassed because it's a puzzle and you can't bypass puzzles. Um, and then there is uh, a, a, an inscription over the door in Dwarvish. Hopefully some of you guys can speak Dwarvish. That says, find the exit with E-X-I-T dotted. And in front of you... Who wants to go first? Somebody on chat, please volunteer. Bazookian, do you take the left door or the right door? Good. On the floor is the letter G. Do you take the left door or the right door? Good. On the floor is the letter D. Do you take the left door or the right door? You die. Okay, going back. Next up, uh, Connor McCohen. Uh, do you take the left door or the right door? All right, on the floor is the letter F. Do you take the left door or the right door? You die. All right. Uh, two dead. How many students are left in the chat? Enough. We can brute force this probably. All right, next up is Shahab. Shahab, do you take the left door or the right door? Left. Good. On the floor is the letter G. Do you take the left door or the right door? Good. On the floor is the letter D. Do you take the left door or the right door? Right. Good. On the floor is the letter F. Do you take the left door or the right door? Did you TPK with this originally? No. Uh, congratulations. Uh, the room that you walk into has the letter E on it and a small button beneath it. You push the button and you hear a rumbling sound. And you walk back to the first set of doors and the first bar is open. Da, 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 da. All right. So next up is uh, Crente. Crente, you think you get the puzzle? Cool. Do you take the left door or the right door? <clears throat> Corinthe, left door or right door? You can't just say I get the puzzle and then not pick. Can't count that fast. <laughs> right door, okay. On the floor is the letter T. Do you take the left door or the right door? Put the music back on for you if you want. Right? Okay. Congratulations. The room has an X on the floor. You push its button. And now... Two doors. Two of the bars are open. Who wants to go next? Blancos, you're up. Left door or right door? You die. All right, who wants to go next? Walk-ins, you're up. On the floor is the letter G. Which way do you go? On the floor is the letter J. Which way do you go? Congratulations. All right, he wants to go last, hopefully last. We have three survivors and how many deaths? Three deaths. <laughs> Benny Hoven, you're up. Left or right? Congratulations, there's the key. All right.
So. Good job. Full, full XP and gold for everybody except for those of you that died. Okay, so this, uh, it was kind of funny. I, I ran my game a number of times, and occasionally somebody who had done computer science was like, this is a binary tree. I'm like, it's a puzzle. They're like, you can't put binary trees into a Dungeons and Dragons game. I'm like, why not? It's a puzzle, you know? And uh, so, uh, you know, some people, some people caught on immediately what's going on. And the rule, uh, what was the rule? What was the rule for the dungeon? You're stealing this for your campaign? Yeah. <laughs> What's the rule? If you're trying to find the letter E, is the letter E to the left or is it to the right of M and N? Right? E is less than M, so you go to the left. Then on the floor is the letter G, which is maybe blocked by my face. Let's hide that. On the floor is the letter G. Is E to the left or is it to the right of the letter G? It's to the left of it, so we go left. Is E to the left or to the right of B? E is to the right of D, right? A, B, C, D, E. E is to the right of D. And so, is E to the left or right of F? Left. Yeah. Okay. And then for X, X is to the right of N. Is X to the right or left of T? What do you guys think? It's to the right. Okay. Is I to the left or right of M and N? To the left is I to the left or right of G. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so basically, uh, just at every point, you just look at the current letter. Letter is J. You're like, is I to the left of J? Then we go to the left door. If it's bigger than J, you go to the right door. And so T is to the right of N, and uh, there you go. So sometimes you find it quickly, sometimes you have to kind of go down the the maze for a while. So, uh, so do you guys kind of conceptually get what's going on here with a binary tree? So, um, basically, at every at every location, there's uh, there's two two options. There's the left option. There's the right option, right? And so, if you're hunting for something, you either if you're le if the thing you're hunting for is less than the letter, you go to the left door. If the thing you're hunting for is to the is bigger than the the door, you get, you take the right door. So conceptually, that is all a binary tree is. A binary tree is a, <clears throat> uh, let's see, here's a picture, okay. So here is a picture of a binary tree, okay. So the root of a tree is actually usually drawn up top, which is a little weird. It's, um, I don't actually know why. I think it's because computer science people just don't know what trees look like. Like, I don't know, have you seen one? No. All right, let's put the roots in the sky, okay. These are called the leaves down here at the bottom. <clears throat> these things down at the bottom here are called the leaves of the tree. So again, I think just computer science people have just never seen a tree before in their life. They're like, where are the trees? Uh, I don't know. They're like this. I don't know. The roots and the leaves or like, I don't know that. I don't know. Never seen one, man. So uh, terminology wise, the root of the tree is that node there. That's the beginning place. It's like, it's like, yeah, like a weeping willow. Sure. Yeah. Except the roots of a weeping willow aren't you know, in the sky usually. Um, so this is like the head of a linked list, right? It's the entry point. So when you start in on a binary tree, you start at the root. <clears throat> and if you're looking for something, if you're trying to search a binary tree, if the thing you're looking for is smaller than the value held at the root, you go to the left and you see, did it match? Yes, okay, return true. Uh, if not, go to the right, did it match? Nope, uh, the thing we're looking for is left, less than, so we go left. And so that's how you kind of hunt through a binary tree. It looks like the metal bar things on playgrounds. Yeah. So, yeah, so the root of the tree is in the sky. Again, I don't know why. Um, a couple of years ago, I had an art extra credit assignment where students, when would that be? 2017, wow, it was a while ago. Yeah, I, I did an extra credit art assignment for my students in um, CSI 26, Discrete Math. 
And so you can paint anything, draw, you know, whatever, anything from computer science. And uh, so one of the students drew a binary tree. And uh, she put it like this, coming upwards, and so I'd rotate it. And then she'd come in in the morning, she's like, somebody messed with my artwork, and she'd rotate it back back up. And then I would be like, oh, that, that tree's upside down. Because <laughs> the root needs to be in the sky. It's computer science. So, uh, so this is the root of the tree. And then every, every node in a binary tree has 0, 1, or 2. There's three possibilities. 0, 1, or 2 children. Okay. So the root has two children. It's got this node here and this node here. Okay. Uh, this node here has two children. This one here, this one here. Node A has a parent. This guy is the parent of A. Then A has two children here and here. But if you look at this very bottom red node here, that, that node has zero children. Now, not shown on this graph is a, a, a node with one child, which is fine. It's, it's A-OK. -okay. But when you have a binary tree that looks like this, when all of the, when all of the kids ha are, when it's like full like this is what we call it. It's like a full and complete tree. And so this is a very nice binary tree. It's, every level has exactly twice the number of elements as the one above it. So this level has one element in it. This level here has two. This one has four. This one has eight. This one has 16. So it's called a full and complete tree. And it's very nice to work with um, when you have a full and complete tree. In reality, you don't most of the time. Um, in reality, you know, as you're building it, like it's going to be uneven and, and stuff like that. So what separates binary trees from everything we've done so far is that all the all the ones we've done so far have been one dimensional, right? A vector, one dimensional, it grows like this. An array, one dimensional, and it doesn't grow. A linked list, it's a one dimensional thing that grows. A stack, it's a one dimensional thing that grows. A queue, it's a one dimensional thing that grows. Everything we've been doing has been one dimensional. It grows in one dimension. You push back or pop front or push front and pop back. That's that's all we got so far. Now, rather than having um, a one-dimensional data structure, we've got a two-dimensional one. This thing will grow in two different dimensions. So it could grow to the left or it could grow to the right. So before we had a, a, a doubly linked list and the doubly linked list had two pointers, right? It had, it had three things in a doubly linked list. It had the data, had a left, it had a previous, and it had a next. And so a binary tree is almost the same, except it's got a, it's still got the data of type T, usually. We template it almost always. Uh, when we do containers like this. So it's going to be a binary tree of T. It could be ints, it could be strings, whatever. We don't care. It's going to hold, each each one of these dots is going to hold one T, one int, one string, whatever. And then, rather than a next and a previous pointer, we've got a left pointer and a right pointer. We don't usually have a parent pointer. You can, but um, in basic binary trees, you, you don't have any need for a parent pointer. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pointers again, you got a pointer to the left, you got a pointer to the right. And this is what's called a recursive data structure. So every node in a binary tree is a binary tree. All right. And so uh, the left subtree here is a binary tree and the right subtree here is a binary tree because the rule for a binary tree is that each, you know, you, you've got a node and it's got two, two kids. And usually the rule for a binary tree is um, uh, technically called a binary search tree, uh, but the rule for it is usually this. Everything smaller than the root, everything smaller than whatever values here, like if we uh, annotate this a little bit, let's say we're just saving integers, we got a binary search tree of integers. Let's say I put the number uh, 20 here, and then I insert the number 15. So I come in here, I'm like, okay, uh, oh, the left subtree is available, there's nothing there, so I'm going to save the number 15 there. And then let's say I insert the number 18. So 18 comes into the root. Uh, is 18 bigger or smaller than 20? Smaller. So go to the left. Is 18 bigger or smaller than 15? It's bigger. So 18 would go there. And that's how you basically build a binary tree. Every, every subtree of a binary tree is a binary tree. And so that means there is a lot of recursion that can be done with binary trees. Okay. Most a lot of algorithms you work with with binary trees work recursively because um, you just say do something and then do that something on the left subtree and do that something on the right subtree and just keep going until you hit null. <clears throat> okay, 
So the kids uh, of the leaves, these are called leaves down here. These are the leaves of the tree. Again, the trees are upside down. Uh, their, their kid pointers are null. So they're pointing to, to null. Okay. And that's how you know when you're at the bottom of the tree. It's pretty simple. So, um, so it's you know, basically got the same overhead as a linked list. It's two pointers to hold every T, which isn't the best, right? So if you've got a linked list, right? Let's say you're holding ints. You're holding the number five. You got a previous pointer, you got a next pointer. The previous pointer is 64 bits. The next pointer is 64 bits. And the int you're holding is 32 bits. So you've got 128 bits of overhead to hold 32 bits of actual data. The data payload is 32 bits. The um, overhead is uh, 64. So the overhead is uh, at four times the size of the actual data you're storing. So in that case, a linked list may be fairly inefficient memory memory wise. It'll, it'll waste a lot of RAM. So uh, binary trees, same problem. Uh, rather than having one data payload and a previous and a next, uh, a binary tree node will look like this. It's going to have the data payload. It might hold the number like 20 here. And then it's got a left pointer. And it's going to have a right pointer. So it's going to have exactly the same memory overhead. 64 bits for that pointer, 64 bits for that pointer, 32 for that one. And so the left pointer would be pointing here and the right pointer would be pointing here. So that's, that's this line here. That's the left pointer and that's the right pointer. So binary trees can be fairly wasteful of memory. But what's the benefit? What's the benefit? What is the running time? What is the big O? So the, the main operations we care about are insert, insert, a little better, repurpose this into an S, insert, search, and delete. So let's assume we have a full and complete tree for now. What is the running time of this? How long does it take to insert something? Is it order n? Is it order n squared? What is it? To insert something, to search the tree, to delete something. What is the running time? So let's say let's say we've got this tree here, right? And we've got uh, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 sounds to me like uh, 30 was 31 nodes so we got 31 we got 31 nodes here what is the worst case time what is the worst case time let's say we're trying to find uh, trying to find that guy there how many how many steps does it take to find somebody at a leaf remember whenever you do big O you care about worst case you know you don't care about how long does it take to find something at the root well that's easy that's <laughs> order one right print the value of the roots order one it's constant running time but if you had 31 nodes in the binary tree how many operations is it the worst is n squared so you're saying that if there are 31 nodes in the in the tree you can you, you're gonna have to do 900 ish operations I think it's a bit less than that um, so if you're looking for that number there you do one two, three, four. So it's not 900, it is four. Or five if it's not found. If it's not found, then you have to go to the kid, which is null, and it's not there. So uh, this, as it turns out, is... So the number of operations you, you do is equal to the height of the tree. Okay. So the worst case running time the big O is it's equal to the height of the tree, right? So if you're searching for this guy here, you have to do one, two, three, four operations. And this tree has one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if search just one, two. So five operations, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, so you search here, no, it's not it, go to the left, search here, is that it? No, go to the left, go to the right, yeah. So the, the amount of the worst case running time for anything you do with a binary tree, really, is, uh, except printing the whole thing out, I guess. Um, but like insert, insert, search, and delete, all of these operations are gonna be order height of the tree. But that's not helpful. If you, if you 
if you were to tell me it is order height, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't help me at all, dude. So we can't actually give that as an answer. So what is the relationship between n and the height? So here we have 31, 31 nodes and we have a height of five, right? And so if we were to add all these kids here, if we double the number of elements in the linked list and add 32 nodes, if we add 32 nodes, if we double, if we double in, if we double how many nodes are in this linked list, how many new levels to the binary tree did we add? How did the height increase? If we go from 31 nodes in the linked list to uh, 63, we doubled the nodes in the linked list, how much taller did the tree get? One, right? So for every doubling, every time, uh, every for every doubling of n, we do one more operation. That's pretty nice, right? So if we have n and we have height over here, if n is one, height is one. If n is three, height is two. If n is seven, height is three. Uh, 15, height is four. 31, the height is five. 63, the height is six. 127, the height is seven. 255, height is eight. So every time you double the size of the data structure, height only goes up by one. That's really nice. That's really nice. Um, mm. for every doubling of n, you do one more operation. That's really nice. And so this is something called order log base two of n, <clears throat> or order log n for short, because the base actually doesn't really matter. We don't care about fiddly details like twice as fast, things like that. So uh, yeah, so insert is order log n, search is order log n, delete, order log n, there you go. Uh, the only thing that would be like order n would be like if you want to print out all n elements of a tree. If you want to print the tree, that's order n. Why? Because you got to print all the elements in the tree. There's no, there's no way around it. You know what I mean? Like if you have to print a million nodes, you got to print a million nodes. You can't do better than order n. All right, on print. All right. So do you guys see that? Do you guys see why this is nice? So, um, is this? So is, uh, okay, here's a, here's a question for you. Here's a question. What is faster? What is faster? Order n or order log n? Which one's faster? Yeah, log. Log is way faster. Um, let's say you've got a million. All right? Yep. What happened here? So you've got a million, and you logarithm it. What base log doesn't matter. Uh, that's log base ten then. Six. <laughs> right. So, uh, Do we have log base two in here somewhere? Uh, log base two, it's 19, 20. Okay, so for a binary tree, if you had a binary n, if n was a million, where's my mouse, there we go. If n was a million, one million dollars, uh, the log base two of n is 20. In other words, if you had a phone book if you had a phone book that had a million names in it, like it's the phone book for all of Fresno and all the surrounding areas, it's got a million names in it. You can find any name in the Fresno phone. Do you guys know what a phone book is? <laughs> um, so uh, you can, uh, I used to use it as a monitor uh, support. Every year they'd send me a, a phone book and I'd be like, why Why are you giving me a phone book? Do you like, I got Google. Like, I don't know. But uh, I would take them and put them under my monitor to raise it up so I don't have to do the slouch, which I constantly have to do. See, this is where I'd be sitting normally. This is like at the top of the monitor right here. 
So I go floop and have my spine like shaped like a shrimp. Uh, so yeah, so a phone book with a million names in it. You can find any name in the phone book by flipping it open to the middle and being like, okay, uh, I'm trying to find, uh, I'm trying to find uh, Muya, right? And so uh, right now I'm in the L section, so Muya is to the right of that. So I can, I can, in theory, rip out the entire left half of the phone book, because who cares? It's a phone book. Nobody uses them anyway. I could literally rip the phone book in half, throw half of it away, and then repeat. Open it to the middle. Okay, I'm in the P section now. All right. Uh, rip it in half, throw the right half away. Go to left. All right. Uh, okay, I am now in the uh, O section. All right. And you just keep ripping it in half and ripping it in half and ripping it in half. And eventually you will get L, M, N, O. Let's go to the N section, go to the M section, and there we go, we'll find it. So you can find any name in a phone book <clears throat> with a million names in it in just 20 steps. That's really nice. That's really, really nice. So um, that's why we have binary trees. Binary trees are a very commonly used data structure. Linked list, mm, maybe, maybe. You might use them occasionally, maybe. Vectors, hell yeah, you use vectors all the time. Binary trees, mm, yeah, yes, we will use binary trees. Okay. Your parents might have used binary trees when you were small, or phone books. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, so the reason why we use binary trees is you can search a binary tree, a binary search tree, technically. Uh, a binary search tree can be uh, searched through in order of login time. Whereas with a linked list or a vector, if you're gonna hunt for somebody in it, you start at the beginning and you go to the end. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, if you're if you're gonna be trying to see if like a, a name is in a, a, a vector, you'd be like, for, uh, you know, auto x in vec, and that's just gonna start at the beginning and go to the end. You know, if x dot name matches double equals Bob, right? Start at the beginning of the vector, go to the end. Do you guys understand? Like if you're searching a vector, you just, it's order in, right? If you've got a million names in the vector, you're gonna do a million searches. You can do a million operations, going through one name at a time until you find the name, okay? It's also called DMV search. <laughs> Uh, so, um, <clears throat> true story. I was at the DMV and, uh, the, uh, uh, the person needed to look me up in the database. So I'm like, all right, here's my name and address and all that stuff. And so she, um, punches my name and hits search. And then it's, then I stand there for five minutes, literally five minutes. I'm just standing there five minutes. Like, how have you not found my name yet? Like, you know, is this Zootopia? Like, is this, uh, you know, the, you know, the sloths of the DMV? You know what I mean? Like, what the hell is going on here? And the only possible explanation I can think of is that they were doing an order in search, right? You got all these millions of people in California, and this is like, let's just start the name A A A and go through Z. And Kearney's somewhere in the middle, and we'll find him when we find him, you know. And so, as you know, based on that one experience, uh, I am 100% confident now that DMV uses order in searching for names. Because what the hell? Five minutes? If it was a binary tree, even if you had, I don't know, like, how many people do live in California, right? Population of California. We just did a census, right? Uh, 40 million. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So if they had a binary tree, you could find me in 26 operations. If they had stored the names in a binary tree rather than it doing 30 million searches, right? So it's literally a million times faster, literally a million times faster to search a name using a binary tree, binary search tree, 
than it is to search using a vector. And so the only explanation I have for the DMV being that slow is they're doing a linear search. Either that or their systems are just overwhelmed with people searching their names. I don't know. Like, they only have, like, what, 20 people work? I don't know. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe they have an IBM mainframe from the 70s that can't handle the load. I don't know. <clears throat> they need to match your name, then the last name, then the date of birth. Yeah, and each time they do a full order in search on it. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. Okay. And so, sorry if any of you guys work at the DMV, but seriously, I get offended as a computer science people when I see bad computer science in real life. You know, if I, if I go to the airport and I see, like, a blue screen of death on, like, the arrivals screen, I'm like, hmm, hmm, yeah, hmm. <laughs> it's an airport, you probably shouldn't be crashing, you know what I mean? Like, crashes are generally considered bad practice at an airport. So, <clears throat> don't recommend it. Um, yeah, so binary tree, like, it's literally a million times faster to, to search all the names in California with a binary tree than with a, a vector. Okay, so that's why we use binary trees. Um, what about inserting? What's, what's faster, pushback or binary tree insert? So what is faster? Vec dot push back. If you're going to push back a new name or if you have some sort of binary search tree insert. You can insert a name either at the end of a vector or in to a binary tree. Which one's faster? Same? Hmm. No, pushback is order one time. Amortized order one time. Uh, remember, most of the time it's order one, and one out of n times it's order n, because vectors have to reallocate occasionally. So with a vector, one out of n times it's n works, so that still averages out to order one. Uh, with a binary search tree, it is always going to be order log n. Okay? So log n is fast, it's not as fast as order one. So if all you're doing is pushing back and then like printing out your records or something, if you're not ever searching, use a vector. Okay. Binary search trees are fast at searching. That's why there's the S in the name. <clears throat> Binary search tree, they're used for searching. If all you're going to do is just add names to a wedding list and you're not ever going to sort them or anything like that, um, use a vector. Yeah. Order one, push back, push back, push back, and then you're going to print everything. To order in to print something no matter what, uh, vector is probably going to be faster. Okay. Can you have pointers to the leaves? Uh, you usually don't. No. Uh, just the parents. The um, you're, you're not going to have a pointer. There's no in pointer, if that's what you're asking. The only people that are going to have a pointer to this leaf here is the parent. The parent's going to have a pointer to it, nobody else. Okay. So, um, so, yeah. And so there is no best data structure. That's, that's a big takeaway from this class. There is no best data structure. But if you're going to be doing searching, uh, vectors are like, mm, not good, all right? I guess you could sort the vector and then treat it like a binary tree, right? You sort them all by name, and then you could do the binary search through a vector. It's the same thing, essentially, as a binary tree in, in that case, right? But then every time you insert into the vector, you have to resort it. And so if you were to do that, if you were going to resort your vector every time you added something, uh, insert would go from order one to order n log n. Right. In that case, you might as well just use a binary tree. Okay. So uh, if you're sorting your vector every time you insert something, use a binary tree. <laughs> right. It's way faster. 30 million times faster if you're in the state of California. So, um, yeah. So the... Standard template library has a binary search tree in it. What do you, if you guys had to guess, if you guys had to guess what, um, what do you think the name of the binary search tree in the standard library would be? You just had to guess. Bogo sorted, uh, so our TA said a bogo sorted vector is the best data structure. Bogo sort means you just randomly shuffle it and see if it's sorted. Uh, it's a very inefficient way of doing code. <clears throat> Look up 
BTS, like the uh, Korean uh, K-pop group, BTS. Binary, BST. All good guesses. All better names than what's actually in the standard. Uh, the standard does not actually uh, utility. Yeah, so if I were to name it, I'd probably call it a BST. That seems like a good name for binary search tree. Nope, in the standard library, it is called set. So that's the... Um, that's the binary search tree in the standard library. There's also multi-set, a variant of that. So if you want a binary search tree using the standard library, use set. And so what is a set? A set is like uh, something's either in a set, five, six, seven, ten. Something is either in the set or it's not in the set. And so you insert it into the set, you can search the set, you can delete the set. And what it does is behind the scenes, you use a binary tree or some equivalent structure to maintain the set. So that is, if you want a binary search tree, you use set, and if you want to have duplicates, like if you want to be able to insert five multiple times, you use a multi-set. And then it will keep track of how many fives have been inserted. Otherwise, something's either in the set or it's not in the set. You're on the wedding list, you're not on the wedding list. You'd use a set for that. So, um, hmm, here's a question. Uh, you, uh, how long does it take to sort a binary search tree? Sort. So sorting for a vector is order n log n, right? Sorting a linked list is order n log n. Sorting an array is order n log n. What is the running time to sort a binary search tree? Hmm. Hmm. We got login. We got order in login. We got n login again. What is the running time to sort a binary search tree? Two. <laughs> Muya RTA proposes order zero, and I think that's actually the correct answer. The answer is it's already sorted, <laughs> right? So you might have 100 here, and like 50 here, and 20 here, and 10 here, and 1 here, and 15 here, and 25 here, and 22 here, and 27 here, and 51 here, and 50 and a half here. It's already sorted. It's already sorted. It's sorted. So to sort, you can't actually sort a binary search tree. It won't let you do it. You, can't, you actually can't write sort. You cannot do the sort. You can't call sort on a binary search tree. You won't allow it. So it's literally, it's literally order zero. <laughs> you can't, it's zero operations. You cannot, you cannot sort a binary search tree. You, you can't write any code. You cannot generate even a single line of assembly to sort it because it's already sorted. So, uh, so it is, if you, if you're asking who is the fastest data structure to sort, uh, you know, binary search trees take the cake because they're sorted already. You can't actually call sort, you can't even call it. It won't compile. So it's order zero. It's faster than order one. And some, some computer science uh, professors won't, um, uh, they, they don't take that seriously, you know. Technically, mathematically, um, remember, because order whatever means there's a constant times the thing that it's bounded by. And so order zero is actually tighter bound than order one, because if you have order one, then that means the running time is less than some k. And zero is, a tighter bound than k, right? Because k times zero is always zero. So in my opinion, order zero is fine. You know, uh, some computer science people consider it a joke. And so they'll say it's constant running time. But <clears throat> it, it, you know, technically, a constant running time is a bound on it as well. So it's technically correct. But usually when we use big O, we want as tight a bound as we can. Uh, just be aware that this can be considered controversial. So. Find out from your professor what they think the running time of sorting a binary tree is when you go on to another institution. To me, I, I consider it order zero. So. All right, so have fun iterating through a binary search tree. Hmm. You think it's complicated? All right, so if we were to print out all the elements in a binary search tree, so we got 100 here and 50 here and 25 here and seven here and three and 10 and 30 and 
27 and uh, 40. Let's say we're going to print out all the elements in a binary search tree in order. So in other words, it's going to print 3, 7, 10, 25, 27, 30, 40, 50, 100, so on and so forth. Um, let's, say, let's say none of the rest of the tree exists, just to make it simple. <laughs> none of that exists, just to make it simple. Let's say we want to print out this tree. And this is a binary search tree, by the way. It's not balanced, it's not complete and full. Uh, but it's a binary tree. Every every you know child has zero, one, or two kids, and it maintains the class invariant. What is the class invariant? What property must be true? So like, for every node in the binary search tree, what property must be true about this node? Let's talk about that. What are the invariants? What are the invariants? What must be true? What do we know about twenty five? if it's a proper binary search tree. Must have a parent node? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, the root doesn't have a parent, right? The, the root is a binary search tree. Every node is a binary. In fact, most, you don't even have a pointer going upwards, right? So you can, you don't even know if you have a parent or not. You could be an orphan, you don't even know it. Maybe you did human transmutation on your parents and turned them into a homunculus, who knows? <clears throat> Everything to the right is smaller. Everything to the left is larger. That's exactly backwards, Mr. Singh. So everything to the left of 25 is smaller. Everything to the right of 25 is greater. And that applies actually recursively. So all of the nodes, all of the nodes to the left of 25 are smaller than it. And all of the nodes to the right of 25 are bigger than it. Not just the child, but everything in that subtree. Okay. So um, that is the invariant, which is everything every thing to the left is smaller everything to the right is bigger and if you don't have a kid then what's so that's invariant that's an invariant and then what about the pointers? What do we know about the kid pointers? What about the kid pointers? What, what invariants do we have about them? If no kid, if no kid, the pointer is null. BSDs can be stored with infix, prefix, postfix, sure, but the most common one is printing it in, you know, in in sorted order, right? It's relatively uncommon to do the other other forms of printing. So when you want to print a binary search tree, you usually want to you want it to print um, three. Uh, what was it seven? Seven. Uh, when you print a binary search tree, in general, you want it to print three, seven, ten, twenty-five, twenty-seven, thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred. And so uh, I'm going to have to erase these invariants, come back in here. Uh, maybe I have a better one here. Sure. So let's say we're going to print this one. What, what order does it print the things in? Do you guys see how this is kind of weird, right? Like you got the root here. Okay. Don't worry about insertion right now. We're printing it. Um, if you wanted to print this tree, you would start here, actually. And then you'd go up to here. But then you'd skip five and go down to here and print this one. Then you'd come up to here and print this one. And then you would nope, come up to here and print this one. And then this one. And then nope, skipping that one and going to this one. And then coming up here and printing this one. So do you guys see how that's like, eh? Like, do, do you guys see how like that could be like a very, very complicated algorithm? Going down, you're going up, you're going left, you're going right, who knows? Confusing. As it turns out, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So let's let's uh, break it to the server and uh, and let's see if it's actually hard or not. <clears throat> all right. So vim bst uh, dot cc and we don't need you or you or you or you.
I use my read library just because it annoys me to use IO streams. Uh, all right, so uh, while true and X, do, do you guys want to save ints or do you want to save names or what? What we're going to make a BST of some data type. What what kind of data do you want to store in the binary search tree? Ints or kind of names ints. It doesn't really matter to me. Both. <laughs> let's make a struct of both. Struct of, gosh, submarines, which has the ant, the, what's it called when you have the number painted on like a submarine or an aircraft carrier? What's that called? Anyone know? Uh, a number model graffiti no like you know what i mean like a uh, paint shop no like the numbers on a navy ship they always have like this giant number painted on it um like that you guys know what i'm talking about inquiry inquiry that's fancy decal aircraft inquiry navy ship numbers uh it's just it's just all the yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We need we need terminology on this. Uh, it looks like it's just called n number. Uh, that's a, that's one thing I keep seeing. Hall number. This is James P. Connolly here at Venice Beach, and today we're gonna play a little word association. We will say a branch of the military. No, go away. No. <laughs> uh, what he means. What's the terminology here? Designations. Designations. <laughs> For the curious, there's always Wikipedia. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I'm going to your website. <laughs> Hold number? Hold number. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Battleships. All right, cool. Let's do battleships. Yeah, okay, there we go. So they're whole numbers. All right, cool. Neat. So let's do battleships. Battleships are cool. Yes, don't do that assignment again. <laughs> So default to zero, and we're gonna have a string name, and it'll default to the main. Because <laughs> they always tell me to remember the main, right? <clears throat> okay. So uh, imagine being a web designer that puts videos on autoplay, right? <sighs> Should be illegal. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna need uh, what, like a we're gonna need like a O string. Operator, ice stream operator. Why did you guys? We, we could have just done ints, and now we're doing battleship. Okay, fine. Uh, ice stream reference operator double right arrow. Ice stream right arrow ends. Uh, this needs to be a friend function. Uh, battleship by reference. Right hand side, and we will. Read the do the name first. That makes a little more sense to me. <clears throat> we'll read the name, and then we'll read the whole number. Okay. All right. So we got a double right arrow operator. Cool. All right. All right. All right, so uh, we're gonna say, and I'm sure, why not? We'll do a O stream operator as well. throw a vector in there yeah jeez uh a vector of ammunition that a <laughs> if 
vector of people and each person has a social security and a rank and gosh you guys are complicating these things all right so anyhow so we are going to read one battleship at a time from the standard input saying please enter the name of a battleship and whole number um zero to flip i guess See my phone. So, uh, vehicles, yeah, and do inheritance. <laughs> we're, we're learning binary trees today, guys. Not, <laughs> but it's cool. I, I, I enjoy your enthusiasm. Okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, so we're going to start off by just um, see outing it, right? That's where I always begin. And uh, how do we get out of here? If uh, battleship um, temp. So if temp dot whole number is zero, or another way we can say that is if not temp dot whole number. So if the whole number is zero, we break out of the loop. And otherwise we will see out temp. And right now we'll just Okay, we read this. Cool. So we don't have a binary tree yet, but we've got our input set up, I think. Let's find out. So remember the main, and the main was... Hmm. Unnumbered. That's a problem. Dang. All right, zero. It breaks. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so enter the name of battleship. The Texas was BB35. Ah, we need a space in there, don't we? Okay. So you should always debug things. Always do a little bit at a time. Catch catch your bugs early. Don't don't write too much code. Test. I always start off by just printing the things, making sure that I'm reading stuff in correctly, um, breaking properly. I got stuff. So the California is BB44, and the Iowa. Uh, were there two Iowas? Three? Three Iowas. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so the famous one is 61. And then... Um, oh, they... Ah! They, uh, they made another main. That's interesting. After that one got blown up. Oh, they made three mains. The one that got blown up. And then they had a World War One era main. And then they had a World War Two era main. That's interesting. And... The main was number 69, not lying to you. That was the actual designation of the main. Uh, the third main. Um, and then what was another famous battleship? Hmm. <laughs> uh, Wisconsin. What was the Connie? That's an aircraft here, right? Yeah, Constellation was CV. It's not a battleship, but whatever. CV 64. All right. So, um, scrapped. Oh, scrapped four years ago. I had friends that served on the Constellation for, for a long time. It was built in 1960. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. So, uh, Bob and zero. Okay. So we are successfully reading in, we are reading in, uh, names and numbers properly. Cool. Does Kearney play Azure Land? I do not. I do not. Um, I have seen those animes where like girls are battleships and things like that. And it's a weird concept to me. Uh, there's also like a tank one where like girls are tanks or tanks are girls. I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand it. Okay, so uh, so we need to make a binary search tree. All right, well, uh, we need to make a node and a tree class, or just a node. Hmm. Let's do a tree class. So we're gonna say class tree, and we're gonna do this properly. So we're gonna have a node class inside of it. So we're gonna have a struct node inside of it. This is in the private section, so main cannot see this. Uh, the node section. Is so ever what does every node in a binary search tree have? T 
Describe every node in a binary tree to me. What three things will it have? Every every point within a binary tree should have three things. And then the tree class itself can hold things like the root, the size of the tree. That's about it. <laughs> right? Have the interface. So what three things are at every point in a binary tree? Data previous and next. It's not previous and next. It's left and right. It's left and right. We don't have previous and next anymore. It's not a not a linked list, even though it's very similar. Okay. Uh, so every node is going to have a data, and uh, I guess we're holding battleships. Um, I could let's do it properly. Let's do template class T, and so it's going to hold a T data, so it can be a binary tree of anything really and it will have a node pointer to the left that is defaulted to null pointer and it's going to have a node pointer to the right which is defaulted to the null pointer and the data will uh, default construct <clears throat> so if you do that you don't know like <laughs> don't do this by the way don't do that don't do that mm. <laughs> don't do that mm. anyone know why <clears throat> You don't know why this is bad. So uh, if T was a string, if T was a string, then uh, if you're making a tree of strings, then it would set the string to be zero. And you think, oh, well, what's the problem in that? Hmm. So don't do that. Uh, default construct it. Default construct it. Let me show what happens if you set a string. String S equals zero. Crashed. Yeah, that's cool. Cling D crashed. That's amazing. <clears throat> Boom. Explodes. Uh, this is a very uh, bad design decision, in my opinion, from the standard library. I don't think you should be able to assign an integer to a string because it doesn't do what you think. It doesn't do this, right? It doesn't. It doesn't turn it into the string zero, mm -mm. and it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't uh, make it an empty string like. Uh, uh, like you might think as well, like if it was uh, the null the null character. No, when you set a string equal to zero, it thinks that's a memory address because strings take pointers and pointers are integers. And so what's happening is it is treating this as null pointer. It's actually it's 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 actually um, it's actually initializing s to be null pointer, and it crashes bad design c plus plus bad design and so have i done that bug before <clears throat> yes i have <laughs> that was actually uh the most serious bug in my read library was i was uh just not thinking and i initialized a t to be zero and so anytime they used the read library with a string it would seg fault should be caught by the compiler c plus plus normally has a very strict typing system but in this case, this is an example why you want strict typing. You should not be able, in my opinion, to assign an integer to a string, especially if it's going to segfault like that. It's too dangerous. True story. It's real, real programming stories from real programmers. Okay. You should not be able to convert a string to int, but you can. It doesn't work the other way, right? Like if you say int x equals hello world, it doesn't work. Okay. So yeah, so we are going to need a interface. Uh, oh, uh, we're gonna need a head. So we're gonna have a node pointer, node pointer called head, and that will also default to null pointer. Okay. So now let's get into the public section. What operations, what operations do we need to be able to support on a binary search tree? What do you guys think? I'm not doing delete today, by the way. <laughs> we got 22 minutes left in class. I'm not doing delete. Delete's the annoying one. It's almost always the annoying one, right? If you delete from a vector, you gotta fix it. If you delete from a linked list, you gotta, you know, move the pointers around. Deleting from a binary tree is just as annoying, if not more annoying. Insert, search, add node. Okay, yeah, let's call it insert just to be standard. So uh, insert will be void insert, and it will take a t, const, t by reference, maybe. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Const by reference. 
call new data. Okay. So now we need to do something. So we're gonna we're gonna be inserting uh, we're gonna be inserting something. But uh, what is the first thing we need to check for? Whenever you work with pointers, what's the first thing you should check for? Right? Because I could say like. Uh, you know, if head, oh, we need a less than operator too. Arr, you guys killing me with these battleships. All right, bool uh, operator less than taking in another const battleship. Right hand side this is a const method and it will return is it from tuple. Mm. Is in tuple, right? Yes, tuple. Bungie. Yep. Nope. Redo. Redo. I'm going to show you guys a cool trick that doctors hate. Tuple. Tie. <coughs> Name. And whole number. So what this does, what tie does, is it creates a tuple for you. It creates a tuple <clears throat> consisting of a name and a whole number. And you're like, wait, isn't this very much like the battleship thing? Sure, it's very similar, but it makes a less than operator for you for free. Ah, cool. So I am just going to use basically a default <clears throat> less than operator, and it does lexicographical comparison. So it compares whatever's here first, and if there's a tie, it compares whatever's here. So I'm going to return tie less rhs.name and rhs.whole number. So this is uh, one simple trick. Programmers hate. So if you ever want to make a uh, less than operator to do sorting and things like that, um, you can just use tie. It makes a struct for you. <laughs> It makes a struct out of your member variables, and it makes a struct out of RHS's member variables, which is exactly the same as your current struct, so it's not probably the best system in the world. Um, and then it does a lexicographical comparison on them. So it'll compare the names, and if the first name is less than the second name, it returns true. And then if there is a tie, then it looks at the second one. <clears throat> or I could do this the proper way and say if name is less than RHS.name, I don't know if it's more proper. But, um, return true else if whole number is less than RHS dot whole number return true otherwise return false so three lines of code one line of code maybe a little bit slower it's up to you depends are you optimizing for your programmer time or are you optimizing for run time those are two different things to optimize for. So, um, right. but that's it, it, when you do this. When you do this here, it's doing this. It makes it for you, and it's very useful if you're going to have like if you've got like 15 member variables and stuff like that. Like writing writing this gets kind of annoying, so just I just use tie most of the time because I'm lazy. Programming is an is a discipline for lazy people that work hard. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, using tie is a really neat, neat trick. Just make a tuple and then it use, use the default comparison operator on the tuple. Okay. So what we need to do here is like you guys said, the first thing you need to check for when working with pointers is, is the pointer null. So, uh, if, if head is null, which we can say like this, with head not head, which is the same thing if head is equal to null pointer, either way. Um, if head is null, then where do we insert the new battleship? What do you guys think? <clears throat> what should we do? If, we, if, we're, if we're calling insert, we're gonna insert the Iowa and, um, and there's nothing in the tree right now, what should we do? 
head points to data equals t. Head points to data equals t. Any problems with that? Correct. Uh, we have to new it, right? So uh, we've got an empty tree. We got nothing in there. So head needs to point at some new, some new data. So we're gonna new this. Uh, so head points to data equals new uh, node, and we're gonna initialize this with uh, new data and call it a day. Okay. I'm not. I don't need to initialize left and right because they default to null pointer. So cool. So if we are storing, if we're having a tree of ints, we pass in insert five. If there's nothing in there, if there's nothing in the tree at all, then head is now pointing at a node holding five and it's left and right kids would be pointing to null. So that is a valid tree. And we're done, that's it. <clears throat> we can keep track of size as well if you want. Um, I'm not going to. <laughs> Laziness, okay, so yeah. That's that. So what is the other case? So head head is, if we get past here, if we get to here, we know head is not null pointer. Do you guys understand? If we if you have an if statement saying if head is null, and then it returns, then if you get past that if statement, head must be valid. Okay, or hopefully it's valid. So if we get to here, you know, head is not null. So what are we going to do? We are going to um, say if the data we're inserting matches, we need to go into the loop now. Actually, that's what we need to do. So um, while true, or yeah, while true. And let's see, we don't want to, we don't want to really mess with head. We'll leave head alone. So we'll say uh, node pointer current is equal to head. And we'll say while current just to be safe. So as long as current's not null, just be safe. Um, okay, so if current points to data matches, so we're going to write that too, aren't we? Okay, if current points to data matches, I should use the spaceship operator. No, if current points to data matches, uh, you guys are killing me with this battleship thing. All right, if uh, matches new data, return. No duplicates allowed. <laughs> Simplicity, right? So now we're gonna need a double left then off. All right, so we'll, I probably should have just done the spaceship operator, but whatever. Sweet. See if that works. Spaceship operator is still new for me. Let's see if that compiles. All right, cool. So um, let's just test that to make sure that works. So we'll make a battleship named the main, which is main and zero. We'll do the original main, which did not have a number. And we will do, um, uh, number and then we will do the second main which was 10.
if main is less than main two, see how main is less than main two. generating a double equals operator. Explosion. Hmm. So it'll do that for less than, and it'll do it for greater than, and not for double equals. It's interesting. Did I type, some, did I type something wrong? Main is less than main two. Okay. If this guy is negative ten, then main is greater than main two. So, what I did here with the spaceship operator is it is uh, maybe pi doesn't do equals. Uh, so what what this does when you do the spaceship operator like this, it'll actually generate the different um, it'll generate the different comparison operators for you. Why is it not doing double equals? Hmm. I'll have to look that up. Like I said, a uh, spaceship operator is new for me as well. Anyway, so uh, if we have to, we'll just make the double equals operator. Does tie not generate? No, it does. Okay. Weird. All right, I'll have to poke around with that more. Yeah, uh, all right, yeah, so good idea from Bazookian. Is it only double equals that's missing? Let's try that. this mainer then you can see it gives a different result because it first compares on the name then it compares on the whole number and so it used to be really annoying in C++ you'd have to generate each of those comparison operations separately and so you'd have to do something like this for less than for greater than for less than or equal to greater than or equal to equal to not equal to bleh. and so now we have what's called the spaceship operator and the spaceship operator will do all six comparisons, although I don't know why it's not doing the uh, double equals. So I'll, I'll have to look at that some more. So I just added the double equals to it. Anywho, da, 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 da. coming back down here. Cool. So now we're going to come to the meat of the matter. Okay. Now we need to go through the linked list and uh, find the first open spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to traverse the linked list. We are going to go through, not the linked list, binary tree. And uh, we are going to go through the binary tree and we are going to go to the left, go to the right, go to the left, go to the right, go to the left, whatever, until we find a child that's open. And then that's the spot it's going to go into. So uh, let's say we've got this tree here. Let's say we got this tree here and we're going to insert Let's say we're going to insert the number 60. Where should 60 go? What do you guys think? People in the studio audience, all I've had speaking recently is Wolf and Bazookian. So not Wolf and Bazookian. You guys are, you're, you're good. You've participated. Let's get, let's get uh, people in the studio audience. Uh, Grace Salazar, Mirai, Granado. Where, where is 60 going to go? Based on your conception of binary search trees. Where would you put 60? The rule is, the rule is, um, 
Child of 65. Very good. Yeah, it's going to go right there. And where would 20 go? Where would 20 go? Where would 20 go? Child of 17. Which which child? Left child or right child of 17? So this is the spot right here. So if you're going to insert 20, what you're going to do is you're going to start here and check check the data. If you get a duplicate, you just quit. No, nope, we don't we don't handle duplicates around here. So if it's if you were inserting 27, you just return whatever. But then if it's let's say we're inserting 20, what we're going to do is we're going to say is 20 less than or greater than 27 is less than. So you move the current pointer down to here. And you say, is it a match? Nope. Okay. Is 20 less than or greater than 26? Less than. Move to the left. Is 20 greater than? Yeah. Is it 20? Oh, null pointer. Once you find a null pointer, that's the spot where you're going to new something. Okay. So when you find a spot like that, you're going to say new node and you're going to set 17's right pointer to be new something. So that is that is how that is how it works. It's not too bad complexity wise or code wise. Okay. So if uh, so, we know we got it. Uh, okay. So if uh, so, if the new data is less than the current data, then we're going to go to the left. Otherwise. And you go to the right. I don't know what it was complaining about. Okay, do you guys understand? So either we have a tie, in which case we return, we don't accept duplicates, or um, we go we go to the left, or we go to the right. right. So uh, if we're going to go to the left, if current points to left is null, if the left child pointer is null, cool, we have found the spot where we are going to insert. We have found, you know, we found a, a spot. We're trying to go to the left. It's null currently. Cool, that's where we're going to insert. All right, so if the current child uh, is null, then we say current points to left equals new node holding the new data. And we're done. If it's not null, then we say current equals current points to the left. And we keep going. That's it. Do the same to the right. So if uh, current if current points to right is null. Then current uh, points to right equals new node, holding new data. It's hard to type when you're twisted an angle like this. Um, and we return. Otherwise, current equals current points to right. And that's it. <clears throat> We're done. Hopefully. We need to test it. That's it. But how do we know it's right? Well we gotta print the we gotta print the tree, right? So we're gonna need a print function as well. So um, in order to see if this is right, I mean we can we could like uh, we could do something like this, like tree battle sloops, and we could do like battle sloops dot insert uh, the main and the main two. Now we need a constructor. Fair enough. There we go. We got a constructor. <laughs> Still doesn't like it. New viable constructor deduction guide for... Oh, we need a template. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so this is a battleship. Uh, tree of battleships. Okay. All right. And so equals new node. New viable overload for equals. Like 
like that. Yeah. Uh, Does not refer to a value. It points to data. Oh. Ah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> head. All right. Head is a new node. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yay. Cool. All right. So we're going to insert these two things into the tree. And uh, yeah, sometimes you have to repeat the template thing. That's usually though when you split it off into a different class. You sometimes like you would have to template this, but this template thing here applies to everything within the scope. So I was just checking to see if that was what I was complaining about. No, nope, but it was just head points to data is the wrong thing. It's just head head equals me node. Okay, so we need to write a print function. We got zero minutes left. So let's see if we can do this quickly. Void print tree or just print. So if we want to print a linked list. First thing we need to do is let's do this recursive print passing in head. So I'm going to make a function called recursive print. Recursive print is going to take in a node pointer and temp. And so if temp is null, we are going to quit. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we are going to recursively print the temps left tree. So what we're going to do when we're printing something is we are going to print, like let's say we pass in root, all right, head, whatever. Um, I should have called, called root instead of head. Oh. So what we're going to do first is print everybody in the left subtree because everybody in the left subtree is less than me. Then I'm going to print me. Then I'm going to print everybody in the right subtree because everybody in the right subtree is bigger than me. We're going to print the left subtree. Then we're going to see out uh, temp points to uh, data. That's an inline. Why not? And then we're going to recursively print the right subtree. And that's it. That's all it takes to print a tree. <clears throat> We're done. Four lines of code. Remember how I told you how complicated that, that thing looks like when you got a tree and you're like uh, going down, then up, then down, then up. Mm -mm. Four lines of code. Print everybody to my left. Print me. Print everybody to the right. Recursively. That's it. So let's find out if this works. And then we'll call it a day. My wife's busting in on me, so that means my time with you is up. Um, I didn't actually what call do you mean her. Your wife? Oh, it's my daughter. She snuck in. I couldn't see her in the in the video. All right, so uh, let's just do this and uh, battle soups dot print, and we'll just return after that. Please enter a name. What the hell's? Did I not compile it? Plus, plus bs2.cc turn c with no value okay. yeah well that might explain it all right so it prints out main followed by mainer if we add a couple more things to it uh, let's just change the name to uh, b followed by a followed by c Maybe I should insert it. That might help. <laughs> In fact, there's a better way of doing it than that, which is just to insert it directly using an anonymous variable. So the first battleship is battleship A with a whole number of zero. The second one is a battleship with the name of. Let's do this. 
B first. Then we'll insert A, the whole number of negative 10. And the third one is C with a whole number of 10. Okay, so, uh, and these things don't need any more. Okay, so remember you can just insert things without a variable name at all. And so I'm gonna insert three battleships into the BST. And when I print them, you see they come out A, B, and C. Yay, everything worked right the first time. Of course it did. Let's pretend that I did it this way originally from the beginning, all according to plan. Okay, and so then if I insert the main, the whole number of zero, and the main with a whole number of 23, and the main with a whole number of 69, then let's put those in a different order even. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in. Uh, when I print it, you will see that it is sorted first by letter, and then if there's a tie, it sorts them by uh, whole number. And so that is that. So at this point, uh, Battle Sweeps is a sorted data structure with all the battleships in it sorted by name first, by whole number second, and we can print it very, very easily. So we just call recursive print passing in the head, the root, and then the recursive print function prints everybody to the left, prints everybody to the right, prints everybody to the left, prints me, prints everybody to the right. That's it. Easy peasy. That's it. Anytime you need quick insert searches and deletes, log in, log in, log in. Sets are pretty good. Binary trees are pretty good. Pretty fast. 20 is faster than a million. 26 is faster than 30 million, right? It's a big difference. That's how fast the logarithm is. Ada, don't spit, dude, seriously, in front of in front of my students. So to search a binary tree with 30 million elements in it, it's 26 operations. You don't have to hide your face either. Be proud. Show your face to the world. It's fine, girl. Yeah, so you can find, you can find anyone's record in 26 steps instead of 30 million steps. Log is very, very fast. This code here I will put up so you can admire it. Copy bst.cc up into public. Okay, public for you guys. And so your next homework assignment will come out on Monday. In the meantime, if your code isn't quite working right for the project, just keep tinkering on it. Once you, once you get a grade on Canvas, that's it. Time's up. So uh, there is a sea shanty thing today at four, but I do have a class right now. So that is it for that. And uh, it is say goodbye to my students. Say goodbye. Don't just wave. Say goodbye. Use your words. Bye bye. Okay. Oh. Right. See you. You're gonna type goodbye as well. Can I see, attend the sea shanty thing? I don't know. I might put up a video recording or something. I don't know. There you go. Let me turn off the, the thing.